When I first started out in Blender, it really took some time for me to sort out the shortcuts that I find useful and the ones that I don't care about. And so in this video, I compiled all the basic keys used for modeling that I find handy, along with some tips and tricks you can do with shortcuts for anyone who needs it. F3 brings out the search and in there you can find just about any tool and option, where it's located in the interface and even the actual shortcut key if you can name them. Shift F1 to F12 changes the editor type and holding control page up or page down switches the workspace. F4 brings out the file context menu which I find very handy if you do a lot of importing and exporting. Keep in mind that you can also do a series of shortcuts like if a shortcut key brings out a set of options you can press the underlined letter of that actual option inside it to select. So what I do in this case is press F4 and then I to import and then F4 and E to export. Pressing Z brings out the shading pie where you can select the different display styles. Shift Z toggles the wireframe mode. Left click selects an object while F2 allows us to rename that object. Right clicking will bring out that selected object context menu and this is a lot of useful options we will get to later. Scrolling the middle mouse button allows us to zoom in and out and holding shift middle mouse button allows us to pan. Holding and dragging the middle mouse button allows you to orbit and the numbers 1, 3, 7, and 9 in the number pad snaps you to the orthographic views. But for me the best shortcut for that is by holding down the middle mouse button, dragging it to an axis and then pressing alt and that way you won't have to think about the orientation. By the way this is a pretty long and compact video that took a ton of effort to make and so it would be nice if you hit like in advance if you appreciate it. Pressing 5 in the number pad toggles orthographic and perspective mode and the number pad 0 gets you to the camera. Hitting Control alt and 0 on the number pad will align the camera to wherever you're currently viewing. F12 renders the scene, the period key zooms you to the selection, and the home key centers the view to where you can see all the visible objects. H hides the selection, alt H unhides everything, shift H hides the unselected objects, and forward slash toggles isolate selected. Pressing N toggles the sidebar where lie some of the object data, adjustments, and some of the add-on options hanging around. Pressing T will toggle the toolbar and another shortcut to access that in the viewport is by holding shift space. Now the way I use this is by holding down shift space and then pressing M to get to the measure tool. If you hold the left mouse button on some tools in the toolbar, you'll be given access to its sub tools and if you right click the scale cage for example, assign the shortcut and then press a key to assign, in my case I use the asterisk key, now you have a customized shortcut. Now this cage tool works simply by pulling the control points. Now you might want to be careful when assigning shortcuts this way as this will override the default keys in Blender. To reset the shortcut, you can either right click the tool again and remove it from there or go to edit, preferences, key maps and there you can remove one or more shortcuts all at once per category. You can also hit this menu button and press load factory preferences and confirm though in this case it is going to reset most if not everything you have modified in the preferences. Pressing W will change the selection type from tweak selection, circle, lasso and box selection. To add objects individually to the selection, hold shift then click. That will also set the object that you just clicked on as the active selection. Active selections are the ones being highlighted yellow when you select multiple objects and they act as the main reference when you make adjustments to the selection. Holding control shift and clicking on a selected object will deselect it and holding control and box selecting will deselect multiple objects. Pressing A selects everything and alt A deselects everything while holding control I inverts the selection. You can delete your selection by hitting the delete key or by X then D which I find to be more convenient because it's a little closer to your fingers when you're working. Holding down D while dragging the left mouse button on the viewport will allow you to draw annotations while holding on the right mouse button will allow you to erase what you drew. Also holding D, right click and then scrolling lets you adjust the eraser size. Now if you have too much to erase you can just go to the sidebar, view, annotation and hit X. Now if you find that too tedious another thing you can do is right click on the button and add it to quick favorites. And from there that will show up whenever you hit Q for the quick favorites list where you can also hit right click to remove it whenever you want to. By the way, don't forget to have your preference settings set to autosave or click on save preferences whenever you make changes to quick favorites or the customized shortcuts if you want to reuse them in future projects. The shortcut for adding objects is by holding down shift and A. Also keep in mind that you can select an option by its order number like in my case, I'd press shift A, 1 and then 2 to get a cube. The G key is a shortcut for moving and holding alt G resets the object back to the world center. And likewise, R is to rotate and Alt R resets the rotate, S is to scale, and Alt S is to reset the scale. And if you want to set your new transform as the official default position, rotation, and or scale, you can do that by hitting Ctrl and A and there will be a bunch of options for that. You can snap to the X, Y, and Z axis in the middle of transforming by pressing the keys X, Y, and Z. But I would prefer holding the middle mouse button and dragging it to the axis and that way you won't have to think again about the orientation. Also in the middle of transforming, you can of course 
first type a value for the distance, angle, and scale. When you're typing down a negative value, Blender actually allows you to type the negative sign at the last part, which is quite handy in case you forget. You can also snap to the Y and Z plane by holding Shift X, and snap to the X and Z plane by holding Shift Y, and you can snap to the X and Y plane by holding Shift Z. If the selection has been rotated, you can snap to its local axis or planes by pressing the designated key twice. For example, pressing the X twice for the local X axis or by holding Shift and pressing X twice for its local Y and Z plane. You can do this too by pressing comma and having the orientation pie set to local. Shift and tab toggles the snaps and holding down Control Shift and tab will bring out the snap settings and you can select multiple options by holding Shift while clicking. Holding down Control while moving will toggle the snaps on and off and holding down Control while rotating will snap the rotation into increments. Holding down Shift and S will give you a snap pie which lets you snap the selection and the cursor. Holding down Control and pressing the period key toggles editing the origin of the selected objects. When working with meshes, right click and pressing O twice will center the origin to the geometry and right click and pressing O then T will center its origin to the cursor. When working with curves, right clicking and pressing E then O will center the origin to the curve and right click and pressing E then T will center its origin to the cursor. Holding down shift and right click will move the 3D cursor and you can also use snaps while doing this. Shift C resets the location of the 3D cursor to the world center. Holding down Control M and pressing X, Y, or Z or while dragging the middle mouse button flips the selected objects. The classic Control Z to undo works here and you gotta click Control Shift Z to redo and you can also hold Shift R to repeat the last action. Right click then press S to shade the selection smooth. Right click then A to shade auto smooth. Right click and F to shade flat. Holding down Control and then typing a number will add a subsurface modifier to your selection with the same steps as the number you have typed. You can copy the selection with Control C and paste it with Control V and that's gonna paste the selection exactly where you copied it so you kinda have to move it. You can copy and paste objects from file to file by the way. You can also duplicate objects with Shift D and duplicate links with Alt D. Duplicate links means that all these duplicates will copy each other's future changes. And if you want the object to stop having this effect, all you have to do is go to the object data properties and click on the number beside its name. Pressing M will allow you to move the selection to a collection and even make a new one. You can select the objects with the same collection by holding down Shift and G. This lets you select objects with the same grouping. You can join objects by selecting them then holding Ctrl J. This only works for similar object types. To parent objects, you just gotta select the objects involved and then make the would-be parent object the active selection and then just hit Ctrl P. Meanwhile, the shortcut to unparent is Alt P. Ctrl L gives you the different options to copy object data such as materials, modifiers, etc. from the active selection to the other selected objects. Meanwhile, Shift L brings out the options to select linked objects like these. And now selecting one or more objects and then pressing tab will toggle between the edit and object mode. In edit mode, pressing one will toggle vertex selection, two for edge selection, and three for face selection. You can select multiple modes by holding down shift and pressing the same corresponding numbers. Control V will bring out the vertex options, Control E for the edge options, and Control F for the face options. Right clicking and then pressing S will subdivide the selection. Control E then pressing U will unsubdivide it. Holding down Control T will triangulate it and Alt J will quadrify it. Control F then pressing P will poke the selected faces and Control F then pressing W will turn the selection into a geometrical wireframe. When you're selecting, Blender by default only detects the visible side of the geometry. But if you press Alt Z, that will allow you to include the things behind it in the selection. Holding down Control and Plus in the number pad will expand your selection. And on the other hand, Control Minus will reduce it. Hovering over a shape or a geometry and pressing L will select everything that's linked or attached to it. You can also achieve the same effect by clicking on a part of that shape or geometry first and holding down Control and L. Holding Alt while clicking on an edge or a vertex will select edge loops and holes in the model in the edge or vertex select mode, while Control Alt will select edge rings. Pressing O will toggle the proportional editing where it sets a fall off to any transform you apply, and while you're at it, you can scroll in and out to make the affected area larger or smaller. Now in the viewport overlays, I turn on the face orientation for this next one. The shortcut for the options for adjusting normals is Alt N. While holding down Shift N or Control Shift N will recalculate the normals of the selections in and out. Now hitting X or the delete key in edit mode will bring a bunch of other options for deleting. Pressing F fills gaps between edges. Pressing M will bring out the options to merge vertices, edges, and faces. While holding down Alt M brings out the split options. Pressing Y automatically splits the selections while pressing V rips the vertices and edges from its geometry. Holding down Alt V also kind of 
does that but sort of covers the holes. Holding Alt S inflates the selection, holding right click and R randomizes the vertices when in vertex selection mode and it relaxes the faces when in face mode. Control H brings up the hook options where you can parent the selection to a separate object. Pressing G twice will toggle the slide which constrains the selection to its faces or edges that it's attached to. And if you press C while you're at it, this will allow you to extend outside the constraint by the same axis. Pressing E extrudes the selection. Alt E brings out the extrude types you can choose from. And if you find yourself using a tool and losing its pop-up menu after clicking on the viewport, pressing F9 will get that back given that you haven't modified anything else yet. The shortcut for the pivot pie is the period key and in here you can edit the orientation for your modifications. Holding down Ctrl R and hovering over a geometry will add loop cuts and you can scroll in and out to add or reduce edges. Ctrl X deletes the selected edge loop. Right clicking and pressing B in face mode bridges edge loops and you can actually make artists out of this too. Pressing I lets you inset a face and if you press it again it toggles inset individual. Holding down Ctrl B bevels the selected edges. Holding down Ctrl Shift B bevels vertices. K is the shortcut for the knife tool and while you're at it pressing C toggles the option to cut through the entire object. Now I know I said this video was mainly for modeling but I think these are really worth mentioning. Pressing U brings out the UV options if you want to unwrap your model. Now for beginners unwrapping is basically just how image textures are being cut and wrapped around your model and these few shortcuts might come in handy while you're learning them. Now I'm getting a basic material to demonstrate this. In the material properties I clicked on this yellow dot and chose image texture and clicked on add new and chose color grid and switched to material preview to see this next one. Pressing U twice will unwrap the selection. Pressing U, S and enter to confirm will apply a smart UV project. Pressing U then C unwraps the selection into cube projection. Pressing U then M marks the seam and pressing U then E erases the selected seams. Now back in object mode, if you happen to have a manifold mesh made of segments, right click and pressing C twice will convert that into a curve. Meanwhile, selecting a curve and right clicking then pressing C then M will convert that curve into a mesh. Now when you're in edit mode of a curve, right click and D will change the direction of the selection. Pressing F connects two selected endpoints and similarly Alt C will toggle between closing and opening the selected curve and Control X dissolves a point. Right click and pressing L then the numbers 1, 2 or 3 will change the spline from poly, bezier or nerves and pressing V brings out the different options for the handles of the bezier. Now again these are the modeling and interface shortcuts I personally find useful. If you think I missed anything, perhaps I might have forgot or haven't used those shortcuts yet. Either way feel free to write them down in the comment section and I'm gonna see you on the next one.